Have you ever wondered how some photographers manage to achieve those dreamy and moody looking photos with some real dark tones which look like they've come straight out of a Batman movie? Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can bring such moody tones and dreamy looking tones into a photo with a few tips and tricks in Lightroom Classic. And this will enable you to achieve photos that look like this from photos that started off like this. Let's take a look at how we can do this. So I've imported three photos already in my Lightroom Classic in order to go through this, this uh, tutorial to introduce those moody looks and those rich dark tones to your photos. I'm going to start off by the first photo, which is this photo of a train going over the Glenfinnian Viaduct in Scotland. And I'm going to start off by reducing saturation from all the colors in HSL uh, panel. So I'm going to reduce the saturation from all the colors here. And this will allow me to reintroduce color as I go on with my edit. But at this stage, I'm going to edit my photo as if it were a black and white photo. I'm going to reduce blacks by a bit and introduce a bit of light into the highlights. Reduce exposure of the overall photo. And now I'm going to start adding a few masks in order to direct my eye onto the subject itself and onto the parts of the photo which I would like to, to direct the viewers to. So I'm going to create a linear gradient mask at the bottom here to introduce those dark tones in the foreground. Then I'm going to create a new mask, another linear gradient mask, which goes over the train itself, intersect that mask with the subject. In this case, it will be the train. And as you can see, my gradient mask is now over the train itself. And I'm going to invert this mask to remove the train from that mask that I've, that I've added. And I'm going to reduce the haze so I can create that dreamy effect in the background. Reduce cl clarity and texture. And now I'm going to reduce highlights by a bit in order to retain some data from, from the smoke. We can keep exposure where it is. And we can create another mask for the subject. Now the selection of the subject, as you can see, has selected parts of the, of the bridge, of the railway itself. So I'm going to click on the mask, click subtract, and use the brush tool to remove parts of that selection. Just paint over the parts which you don't want in the selection. You can use your scroll wheel on your mouse to reduce the brush size. And I'm happy with that selection. Now I'm going to increase exposure by a bit and increase shadows and reduce blacks slightly. Now I'm happy with my masks so I can start introducing a bit of color in this photo. Now I can remember that the train had some nice red tones so I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, slide the, the red slider to, to plus 60 and I know that there's also some orange hidden in there, so I'm going to also increase that up to plus 60 here. Now we can also play around with luminance of the colors, and as you can see, the, the red tones are a bit richer now. But what I would really like to do is move that orange uh, hue towards the red side. So we create just a single color, which is focused on, on red. Now at this stage the photo looks quite good, however it just looks like a train over a black and white background, which is not really what we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and go to the color grading tab, click on the black circle here, which is our shadows, and we're going to introduce a bit of teals in the, in the shadows area. And as you can see, the shadows have now switched, switched over to, to a teal color uh, tone. 
We can also uh, introduce a bit of color to the midtones, and I would like to go to the opposite side of the of the color wheel and select an orangey looking tone. And we can play around with blending and the balance of the of the tones here, which will um, output the desired look that you're looking for. And to me, this looks pretty good. And the last thing I would like to do is crop this photo to have a better looking composition. And there you go. Now, if we compare the before and after shots, we've gone from a pretty basic looking shot um, of a train going over this Glenfinian viaduct, and we've changed it into a photo which is very dramatic and very moody. Now, we can even use this kind of editing technique on different types of photos, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact process on another photo of this reindeer. And that is the before and after of a pretty boring shot into a pretty dramatic and cool looking shot. Now, one last step I would like to um, introduce here is copying the develop settings that you've used on this photo in order to edit your last photo. So I'm going to copy all my masks which had um, the foreground, the background and the subject selected and I did all the adjustments on those masks. I'm going to copy them, go over to my untouched photo which is the third photo right here. Right click on it, develop settings and paste the settings. Now Lightroom will take a while to detect the subjects in question and as you can see we already have that dreamy look immediately as soon as we apply that, that uh, copied settings from, from the previous photo. Now here obviously I can see that my foreground mask isn't really selecting what I'm intending to select and I'm going to adjust it in order to select the desired parts of the photo. But this is a bit too dark for my liking so I'm going to introduce a bit of exposure reduce the blacks by a bit I'm going to adjust it a bit further and once again if we compare the before and after we can see that we've gone from a pretty boring looking shot of this castle to this dramatic scene which has that high separation between the background the foreground and the subject itself I really hope that these tips and tricks have helped you bring out those dreamy and moody looking colors in your photos and please make sure to like and subscribe for similar tips. Thank you for watching.